Hi guys, today we're building Sensor Data Visualizer app, which is going to be like line chart, uh, but dynamic. And it's also go going to be custom built for things like sensors or any kind of data really. So we already did a t tutorial on um, line chart that's present in JavaFX, but it's more or less static, or at least the tutorial was. So we're going to take dynamic data now and we're going to do something with it. We're going to need a canvas, which is what we're going to use to draw stuff on. Uh, we need graphics context. We need to add our canvas to the scene graph. We probably need a timer. Whenever you're animating something, you probably need a timer. Uh, that looks all right for now. Let's have a data source interface. I'm going to make it generic, see, because I don't know what kind of data you're getting. Get, uh, get value, something like that. And our concrete implementation is going to be data source double. So let's call it random data source. Because I don't have any sensors um, to use, so I'm going to use just mock data. It's going to be a double, and it's going to return a value between um, have a random object in here. It's going to return a double value between zero and one. Next double. We got our random data source, and now the key of this video is um, dynamic line chart, canvas line chart. Let's call it that. We're going to need the graphics context on which to draw. We're going to need the color of this line chart. Um, data source, which is going to be data source double in this case. You can extend it as needed later on. As for simplicity, I'll just use this one. And then I want to generate a constructor with all these. What's next? We probably want to then update and we want to render. Actually, we could do it just in one go, update and render. In fact, in that case, you don't need access to G. Uh, you could just pass the graphics context. So we probably want to clear our graphics context before doing anything. And then obviously we need to construct these things. Yeah, let's do the high level uh, code first and then we'll see how to implement the low level bits. We're going to have multiple canvas line charts, uh, just call it charts. I'm going to create a few now. So charts, nope. Charts add new chart. It takes graphics context, a color, let's go with uh, red, and a new random data source. And then let's get one more of these. Red, green. And then one more color blue. Also, I don't want them to be printing very sort of similar values. So how about we change this to something different? This is functional interface, right? Yeah. If it has just one function that needs to be implemented, it's a functional interface. So we can do lambdas. Uh, shall we do random, but we're going to limit to 0 0.3. So the range on this thing is between 0 and 1. The range on that thing is between 0 and 0 0.3. And now what we need to do is just go through all charts and then chart, chart, update, I guess. Yeah, and then we can even do this method reference. Clear, update, 
I think this is good enough for high level code. Let's dive into the level level details. So we need to keep track of this data over time because that's going to return just a single element. So for that, we can have something like a buffer of double values. And then each time a new item arrives, uh, value, we can do data get value, and then we can add this value to the buffer. And then if buffer is uh, greater than your maximum limit, I don't know, we have 800 pixels in the x-axis. So how about we use this as the y value? Well, it's going to be y value anyway. So if that's greater than 800, then just remove the first item. And that should give us the animation. So how do we draw this? Um, G stroke line is probably what we're going to use because these are lines, right? Yeah, it's a line chart. So let's give it uh, a color. Actually, we can do that in the constructor. No, we have to do it here because this is updated per kind of chart. So color and then stroke line for, for each item, right? So there's buffer for each um, value. I don't want to shadow the name, so let's call it something different. Just Y, because it is Y. G stroke line. Right, for this, to create a line, we need two points. So we need to store the previous points as well somewhere. Can we store them here, I wonder? So this is basically update and this is basically render, right? Old x is minus one, minus one. I want to give it some sort of non-valid uh, values so I can then say something like if old y is greater than minus one, only then kind of draw from old x, old y to new x, new y. New x is just plus one because we have a one-to-one -one mapping between number of pixels and the number of values in the buffer. You may want to change that if you want to say draw a single value over multiple uh, pixels rather than just one. I don't think this is going to look good, but this is going to be a start. And the new y is just y. And then we need to reset old x to this thing, old y to y. Oh yeah, it's a lambda, so it won't let me. Let's do this then. Yeah, that's better. In which case, we do need to reset this at some point. Okay, let's see. Let's see this work. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because see, you have values in here which are between 0 and 1 and when translated to pixels it's not great because we have the entire window which is 600 pixels uh, in height so we need to scale this up uh, how about we scale this by 600 I guess in which case this the range goes from this and we multiply that by 600 and the range went to you this, which is um, better, I guess. It's not really visible because it's multiple line charts just going over each other. So how about we... Well, the good news is we have the animation, which is going to keep running because of the buffer that we're constantly cleaning up. Um, but that's basically noise. 
I wonder if we increase the interval. So if we scale the x value as well, if we say there are only uh, 200 items and the x scale goes from 1 pixel to 4 pixels. Let's try this one. That's better. That's almost readable. Let's make it 10 pixels. I really need to extract this somewhere so I don't have to retype every time. Um, this is width divided by 10, right? So if I say something like static final um, double pixels per unit, and then I say 10, actually let's keep it int, I guess. So we can do this. And then you can have another static final and max items. Um, that max items is your width, which is 800. Again, 800 needs to be extracted somewhere here, divided by pixel, pixels per unit. And then you have number of items that you can store, or rather number of items you can visualize in one go. Just a little bit easier to read. The 600 should also go. Well, let's try that. quite fast, but at least you have individual um, data points that you can potentially read. And of course you can slow down the animation by reducing the uh, number of times you update in one second. So if you have something like time stored as a double and then each time you do this, you add 0 0.016, which is a number of seconds per frame. That's, of course, assuming that you're running on a 60 hertz display. Uh, and then if t is greater than 1, so you're doing one frame per second with this thing. Uh, something like that. Yeah, that, that slowed down the whole process considerably. You probably want to create stroke width of higher value and reduce that to maybe 0 0.2. Um, stroke set stroke set line width to 2.5 maybe I don't know is that better I suppose you're not going to be combining multiple line charts in, on one canvas. So that's something um, to think about if you want to. But if we were to say reduce that to just one, let's keep, keep the red one and then maybe draw um, lines. So if we set Stroke to color black. Stroke line between zero and actually, how about we just 
do something like 600, 100, and then G stroke line. From zero to um, that, 800, that, because Y is the same. So it's going to be a horizontal line. So you can see um, individual lines and they give you the interval. And then you might want to also draw a bit of text over here somewhere to know what these values actually are. And then just hook it up with your sensor data or any kind of data you, that you have, and then you might be able to visualize something. You might need a bit of tweaking here and there so that the data is actually more readable. Because ultimately, these visualizations are done in order to make sure that the, you can effectively read um, the data. So the animation itself is uh, actually not that important. But at least you know how to do it now. Okay, so in this video we talked about how to create a custom-ish control, although this isn't technically a JavaFX control, just a class that keeps some data in and draws to the graphics context. And we also looked at how to animate using a buffer to store values for the y-axis and then use the animation timer to drive the x-axis values, giving us some points into the space, which we connected, and we ended up with a line chart. This is probably the last video before Christmas, so have a good Christmas, um, Happy New Year, and I'll see you guys in 2021. Thanks for watching.